With Volt, your controller and view code are run inside the browser. This is a great way to reuse code and enjoy the flexibility of Ruby on the front end. In today's example, I've built a simple application to show information about the server running on the back end. I'd like to emphasize that I said back end. You might be wondering how this is possible if all of your controllers in view live in the browser. We'd accomplish this by using Volt tasks. Volt tasks allow you to run code asynchronously on the back end. For this screencast, I'm going to assume you have a basic understanding of Volt models and promises, as well as a basic understanding of how Opal fits into the Volt framework. If you're unsure about any of these tools, take a look at the Volt documentation and come back to this screencast later. The first step to building a task is running a generator. I've already generated the app, so let's go ahead and make our task by typing Volt G for generate task, and we're going to name this one stat. This creates a scaffold class for us to put tasks in. Let's talk more about what a Volt task object is. After running the generator, we're going to need to put an instance level method on the task. I'd like to point out that even though this method is returning a Ruby hash, it's going to be coerced into a Volt model when it reaches the front end. It's time to access our task object from the controller. Here's our standard main controller that was created by the generator when we made the application. As you can see, I'm here in the index action, which will be called when the page loads. Let's write code for our first task call. As you remember, we defined show stats in the task object previously. And this is a volt promise object, remember. So we can call then and error methods on it like any other promise in volt. It will pass in the return value of our task when the promise completes. Do you notice anything strange here? Our instance level method is being called at the class level. That's a convention that Volt uses. That's all there is to it. You just executed code on the back end safely and asynchronously. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any more questions. Thanks for watching.